So I thought I'd make a quick video about um, setting up the ESU uh, smoke generators with the ESU lock sound XL. Um, I tried to do this recently and ran into a few problems, particularly with the um, chuff smoke emission and a few people on the ESU cab control and lock sound installation Facebook group were kind enough to help me um, and point out the issue because it's not very obvious in the installation manuals. Um, so in order to pay that kindness forward, I thought I'd make this video in case anyone else uh, gets into that situation. Um, so hopefully this makes it a little bit easier to understand how to set it up. Um, looking at the uh, smoke generator itself, first of all, the installation to the lock sound, um, you will have a bunch of cables coming off of the connector here. Uh, the blue and the grey cables, you don't need those. Um, I haven't cut them off, I've just um, moved them out of the way and put them in some heat shrink tubing. Um, the wires that are of interest are these four here, um, and there is a red one that is the power. There is a black one, which is the negative, and then green and yellow. I can't remember which is which, but one sends the um, the chuff information and one sends the um, the on off information to the smoke generator, so far as I understand. Um, but that's by the by. Um, wiring it up properly is what's important, and then configuring it properly in the lock sound software. So. This is my um, this is my decoder, and you have to excuse the wiring. There's quite a bit there, um, and a lot of it isn't necessary. So this small connector here, going to these two terminals, um, that's for the loudspeaker. Um, this little harness here that goes to some of the aux ports on this side, um, that's my light harness, and it just makes life easier when I want to. Um, uninstall the decoder. Um, I've also got two connectors here, one for the power um, and one for the uh, oh, sorry, one for the input power and one for the track power. Um, the connectors that are of interest, as I said, the the red power comes off here, which is the U plus. So if I can get that to focus properly, there we go. Um, the U plus down here. That's the smoke power. The ground here. Yeah, let's focus again. There we go. Ground, which is this one just here. And then the commands, which come off of, in this case, aux one and aux two. So yellow goes into aux one and this green, uh, it looks a bit blue in the camera it's green um, goes into aux 2. Um, forget about th this here is part of my lighting setup and these two are as well so the ones that are of particular interest for your smoke unit are these two. Um, mine's hooked up to the decoder tester uh, at the moment um, I'm just using that to configure the decoder um, you could do it on the track, you could do it in the loco, but I tend to take mine out and do it um, on the decoder tester just because I run battery, so I don't really have um, a DCC rail set up and I find it easier to do it this way. Um, looking at the software, the first thing you will need to do is set those AUX1 and AUX2 um, outputs to be correct. So AUX1 here you will need to um, change the output to the external controlled smoke unit. And because it's an ESEU unit, you want to select the ESU smoke unit. That's pretty straightforward. Um, I've left the power on delay and the power off delay at zero. Um, I don't really have a need to change that. The other output is the AUX2. You can see that there. Again, I've given it a descriptive name and the output mode is this trigger smoke chuff. Um, chuff power and fan power set to 31. Um, I haven't played around with that. And the timeout set to zero. Um, 
my lock sound, by the way, is showing the CVs. Um, I've switched that on. If you want to do that, it's useful. Um, you can do it down in program settings and you just click show CV numbers. You can turn it on or off. No, it's useful to know. So we've done your function outputs. Um, then we want to go to function mapping and you decide how you're going to, what function key you're going to use to turn the smoke unit on or off. Um, I'm using F4 there. And on the logical functions, you want to choose ESU smoke unit. This is all stuff that you can get from the instruction manual, but this next part is the bit I needed help with because it wasn't very obvious. Um, and it's that you need to set AUX2 as a physical output. If you don't do that, you won't get the chuff um, when the loco starts to move. Um, so you'll get steamer idle and then you won't get anything further once it starts to move. When it goes through the acceleration, the deceleration, the coast, um, you will get nothing. Well, I, I got nothing at least. And then you will get smoke again when the thing comes to a stop. And that is set in the sound. The sound file here. This is the important one, sound slot one. That's the main driving sound. Um, you may see, as I have here, because it's a multi-channel um, sound file, you'll see this, the, the sound in slots one and slot two, and slot two is greyed out. That That's fine, that's normal. Um, double click on slot one, and you get the... Let's just move this down a bit get a bit more space you get the transitions here now if you're going to use an ESU supplied sound file um, a lot of this certainly the later sound files are all done for you um, but it, it's probably worth checking anyway um, each time you select one of these containers which is a state um, like the stop state SD is start to drive and DS is drive to stop. And then if we move along, you can see the various drives and that goes up to, I think it's four, no, six. Goes up, to, goes up to six. And then up at the top here, we have the acceleration steps that it moves through. So I believe when it's, it's, it's accelerating, it's going up through the sound file like this as it accelerates. Um, down at the bottom, you've got the decelerations and then the coasts. For each of these, check that you've got uh, some detail. So the stop, you click it, the state properties appear for that container. And what you care about here is the smoke unit information. So those are typical settings for the loco at idle. Um, as you go to stop to drive, smoke unit settings, they change, they change. Yes, they do change a little bit. The fan increases and the temperature increases slightly. Um, drive to stop as well, we'll have just a fan and temperature. And as we move along the sound file to stuff like, let's for a go to the accelerations, for example, click on an acceleration, you'll see that we start to get the steam chuff ticked. So all of the accelerations have the steam chuff ticked. The DC steps will have the steam chuff ticked. The Let's move down to the coasts. Coasts do not have it ticked. And what else have we got? DCs, DCs, the drives themselves have the steam chuff ticked. 
So you can highlight any of these. And if I pull back a bit, actually, you'll see the whole screen without me mucking about. So when you've got that all set up, as long as you've got information here in the smoke unit, in the sound for sound slot one, and you have in the decoder your function mapping set and your function outputs set, then you're good to go. Um, what you will need to do when you write the information is write the sound data. Um, the reason that you need to write the sound data is some of that smoke data is included in the sound data. If you just write the decoder data, you're not going to get all of that um, information relating to smoke that's in the sound file. So make sure you do that. When you go to write the sound data, you'll be prompted, a box will come up um, with a pre-ticked, do you want to write the decoder data as well? So by default, it's going to try and write everything to the decoder. And that's what I do um, just to make sure that I've got everything. Something else to be aware of when you read the decoder data in here, it's not going to read the sound data back into the lock programmer. So if you open the lock programmer and then read the decoder data and then save that as a project, that project won't have any sound information. OK, so just be aware of that. I, it caught me out the first couple of times that I used it. I didn't realize what I'd done. Um, it was no big problem because what I could do was read the whole project file again um, off of disk and then I would read the decoder data into that so I'd get my decoder data and the sound data and then I could save the project file and the project file would have everything um, an example of a project file that's got sound you can see here um, these two here they're much bigger files they have the sound data this one here this Mikado no smoke is where I'd made the mistake of not saving the sound data. I just read the decoder data and then saved it as a project. Um, and so obviously that's much, much smaller. So that's worth knowing. Um, that's how you set up the sound um, and the steam for the ESU uh, steam generator. Um, this is the large steam generator. Um, it's exactly the same for, this is the new dual steam generator. Um, you can see it's got a, a, a chimney on the top and it's got a um, cylinder steam outlet on the bottom. Um, it has a single tank and it has a pair of fans. It has independent fans and it has uh, independent heaters. Um, and it's got a harness that goes to this clever little circuit board, which I can focus on that. There we go. You can see on there that it, it splits out motor one, uh, motor one plus, motor one minus, temp one, temp two. So it's splitting out the commands from what is the normal harness, which looks like looks like this. So again, blue and grey aren't used. And it's got the green, yellow, red and black. That I was talking about earlier is exactly the same connected to the decoder. This just has this circuitry in the middle to uh, make sense of the data the decoder is sending and send it to the right heater um, and the right fan. Um, so hopefully that's of some help. Um, I say it helped me, so hopefully it'll help somebody else. Cheers.